Hi, I'm Mike Gather, Chief Product and Technical Officer for Enable. In light of recent security events, I want to discuss what we're doing as an organization to continue protecting our MSP partners. Your businesses depend on platform like Enable's RMM and NCentral platforms, and we do not take this responsibility lightly. Today, I'm joined by several team members to discuss the steps we're taking to continuously improve security at our company and in our products. We will also discuss the recent Kaseya incident and offer some action steps on how you can harden your own systems. To kick off this discussion, I want to introduce Dave McKinnon, our Chief Information Security Officer, who will give us an overview of the Kaseya incident. Dave? All right, thanks, Mike, for having me. I don't want to get into the weeds on the recent Kaseya attack, but I do want to cover the high-level pieces. The attackers found and leveraged multiple zero-day vulnerabilities on the Kaseya VSA platform. The first was an authentication bypass vulnerability, which allowed the attackers to gain access to the system. Then the attackers actually masked an R-Evil ransomware as a fake uh, software update and labeled it as a hot fix. They then leveraged a SQL injection vulnerability, and they took the advantage of the VSA platform to propagate that ransomware into the MSP customer's environment. It's worth noting that over the last few years, national authorities like CISA have issued warnings about MSEs becoming the primary targets for cyber criminals, and this attack falls directly in line with those warnings. Kaseya did rep respond promptly to the incident by taking their cloud instances, as well as encouraging their customers to take on-prem instances offline as fast as possible. As they learned more and worked on con containing the damage, the Kaseya team continued sharing information to their customer base. And I know I speak for all of us in the industry by thanking Kaseya for both their transparency and, and their, the information they shared during what was a very difficult time. In parallel, Huntress Labs was also performing their own investigation and updated the community with compromise indicators as they were identified and confirmed. It's really unusual to receive threat, in, threat indicators in the middle of an active attack. So I wanna thank Huntress for their transparency and sharing. This openness allows us all to learn and improve as attackers adjust their tactics. We learned a great deal from the attack just that, that happened at the end of last year and have used it in our own information security programs which I'm sure Jim will discuss some of those steps we've taken shortly. Thanks, Dave. For those watching, you probably want to know if this in fact affects your Enable products, particularly a hosted end central instance. For that, I want to turn to Jim Mulkey, our Group Vice President of Engineering. Jim, how does this affect end central? Thanks, Mike. Well, fortunately, the attack doesn't directly affect end central, but as Dave mentioned, it is a good opportunity for us to study and continue enhancing our own security. Since the end of last year, we've worked hard on our Secure by Design initiative, and I'll go into more depth on that program later, but for now, there's two elements of that program that specifically are aimed to help prevent the kind of behavior we saw in the recent Kaseya incident. First, we have an extensive vulnerability management process. As Dave mentioned, the attack vector here was a vulnerability in their service. We currently look at all potential security vulnerabilities as they are reported across our products, and then evaluate, score, and prioritize them according to potential impacts. Then we eliminate the vulnerabilities based on the prioritization. Our teams have already reviewed the vulnerabilities present in the Kaseya attack and compare them against our own backlog, and we've checked to make sure that any vulnerabilities similar to those uh, present in the attacks on Kaseya have been fixed. We've also implemented an ongoing threat modeling process. This involves training our engineering teams to anticipate potential threat vectors that could be used by a bad actor and prevent real or potential vulnerabilities from making it out into the wild. At this very moment, we're currently engaged in reviewing the attack vectors involved in the Kaseya incident and using those for additional threat modeling. Thanks, Jim. While our teams have worked hard to minimize any risk in our platforms, it's important to remain vigilant on your end as well. We're all part of one security ecosystem, so anything you do to improve your own security posture helps the wider MSP community. With that, I want to turn it over to Mark andre Tangway, our head automation nerd, and Lewis Pope, our head security nerd, to discuss how you can harden in Central and RMM. Let's start with Mark andre Thanks for having me. While the Kaseya attack was an attack based on software vulnerability, it's still very important to do your part by keeping up with good cyber hygiene. Regardless of whatever platform you use, always start by following four basic good practices. First, Enable multi-factor authentication or MFA on any platform that will allow it. Second, obviously set strong complex password requirements for all your users, no exception. Third, expire password after a set amount of time and replace them as needed. Personally, I'd recommend changing them at least every 90 days, if not less. 
Finally, you may sure to audit your user accounts regularly to ensure you revoked access for employees who have left. These will apply to absolutely any software you use, but let's discuss our two RMM solution. I'll take the Central first, and then I'll pass it on to Lewis for RMM. So let's discuss it with the on-premise and central servers first. You'll want to start with port restrictions. On your firewall, you want to block port 10,000, which is a central admin console port from your WAN, and make it only accessible over LAN. Optionally, you can also block port 22 for SSH on the WAN and only allow it for LAN access as well. While you could block other ports, please note that you must keep port 443 and 5280 open for agent communication and remote control. If you want to block additional ports, please refer to the Uncentral Security White Paper, which will be linked with this video. After covering port restrictions, another important thing to do is confirm that the Enable Support Account is disabled. This should be only turned on when you're directed by a support agent. Other than that, this should be disabled after any support session as concluded. Next, you can review your default password complexity rules in Uncentral to ensure that they match your standards. Often when I do in central auditing, I'll see password rules set up to never expire or use lowest possible complexity. Make sure you change these for increased security. You can do this by logging into Central Administration Console with your product admin account. Finally, you can also use a web application firewall. Some partners are using WAFs like Cloudflare and others. While the previous recommendation only apply to on-premise servers, there are some rules that will apply to both hosted and on-premise and central instances. As I mentioned previously, you want to make it a good practice to disable any user account that are uh, no longer with the enterprise as part of your offboarding process. Your customers expect you to handle this for them, so make sure you do it for yourself as well. As I mentioned earlier as well, please review any active users at least quarterly. Second, just a reminder that every user account without exception should have MFA. We cannot stress this enough. People are fairly accepting of MFA at this point, and your employees should be used to this if they're using 365 and Azure. Even if it seems like an inconvenience, it's really critical for reducing security risk. Next, you want to look at role-based access permission in Ncentral and make sure your accounts conform to the principle of least privilege. Users should only have access to the customer accounts in areas of Ncentral that you need to access for their day-to-day. -day. You can find these by navigating in the application into the administration section, then under access groups and roles. Finally, you want to enforce browser session timeouts on every admin account in Ncentral. Check your administrator logins individually and make sure the session timeouts are set to no greater than 120 minutes, preferably closer to 20. You can do this by clicking into the admin section under the system and service org levels, and then navigating to the user section. Once you're there, pick a login, check under the details section and user information to ensure a timeout is set to no greater than 120 minutes. Know that admin users can modify this setting themselves, so please put some time aside to audit this every 90 days or less. All right, that covers in central. You can get written instructions for all of these by visiting the links in this video below. Now, I'm going to pass it over to Louis Pope, our head security nerd, to talk about the Enable RMM site. Thanks, Mark Andre. Some of my advice will overlap with yours, but I'll cover them anyway in case some of our partners skip to the RMM portion. First, I recommend enabling multi factor authentication for all RMM users and for your own email access. This should occur without exception, as MFA is a best practice for preventing unauthorized logins. RMM and email are both critical systems, so don't let them go without this extra check. Second, restrict RMM access to a list of pre-approved IP addresses to prevent bad actors from connecting to RMM. You can also consider having users log in from hardened VMs to get reset weekly or monthly. Third, Mark andre mentioned session timeouts. I highly recommend checking those settings for all users in the RMM dashboard. Next, audit existing user accounts and permissions and try to conform to the principle of least privilege. Make sure technicians only have access to the accounts and data they need to do their jobs. Lastly, make sure you're upgrading RMM agents in a timely manner. You can view specific instructions on these tasks by reviewing the technical documentation in the comments below the video. Beyond the steps you take with Enable RMM, don't forget to practice what you preach for your own internal security. Make sure your internal systems are properly patched. Use a next generation endpoint protection solution with detection and remediation features like enables endpoint detection and response to monitor and protect all your systems. Finally, try implementing a company-wide password manager to help enforce passwords with best practices. This can help you avoid password reuse among employees and also allow auditing passwords across your organization. Thanks, Mark andre and Lewis. As we've mentioned, anyone can get hit by an attack. 
Large scale supply chain attacks aren't new. As a company, we have experienced dealing with these extremely unfortunate incidents. Since late last year, we have been fully operationalized our Secure by Design program for product security. Jim Mulkey already spoke about how this program addresses specific elements of the Kaseya incident, but it's worth going into a little bit more depth on the program. So I'd like to pass it back to Jim. Jim, can you outline some of the high level details of our Secure by Design program? Of course. We undertook our Secure by Design initiative to continue enhancing the security posture of both our products and our internal organization. The initiative broadly covers four work streams. First is our internal environment. Improvements uh, have included things like requiring global password resets, deploying advanced threat detection across all systems in our network, not just in engineering, and requiring multi multi-factor authentication to access the enable network. It's not any, this is not an exhaustive list by any means, but we're continuing to enforce its practices on all our internal systems. The second work stream uh, is in regards to our development environment. We've adopted best practices in secure development, uh, like enforcing separation of duties, implementing the principle of least privilege. This keeps employees in their respective lanes, ensuring that they have the authority that they need, but not spanning across development, build, and production deployment. Uh, additionally, we moved our product build systems into what we call a clean room, so we don't have to build on any systems that could potentially be contaminated by previously uh, unknown vulnerabilities. The third work stream covers security improvements in our products. We've incorporated dynamic and static code scanning tools for all products. And as mentioned before, we've expanded our vulnerability management process and program, and we've accelerated our SLAs around resolving critical and high priority issues. Uh, also, as we've discussed, we trained all of our engineering teams on threat modeling to help them recognize potential vulnerabilities before they could ever end up in a production system. For a number of years, we've conducted penetration tests against Central, RMM, and most of all, our, most of our other products. As part of the Secure by Design initiative, we've expanded that program and engaged additional experts to conduct even more extensive pen testing. Uh, additionally, we've scanned for and remediated any AWS keys or secrets that may have been in our code. The fourth and final work stream addresses our secure build pipeline. We've brought in specialists in the industry to work with our internal experts on DevOps to develop and migrate all of our products onto a highly secure and highly auditable build pipeline. We've made a lot of progress already and expect that most of our products will be migrated to the new build pipeline by the end of 2021. That covers a high level overview of our secure development process. I know that David Kinnan wanted to discuss improvements we've made to safeguard partners' data in both our data centers and SaaS applications. He also wanted to talk about how we've reworked our corporate infrastructure according to best practices, including adding a standalone enable security team. Dave, can you update everybody on our current updates? So as we've become enable, we've adopted the NIST framework and CS benchmarks to help ensure we protect the full breadth of our cloud and SaaS infrastructure. This is an industry recognized defense in depth approach to our security. Next, we've invested heavily in terms of both time and resources on collecting, aggregating, and analyzing events across our enterprise and our product portfolio. This allows us to proactively identify potential issues and work to prevent them from impacting our systems. As for our security monitoring in preparation for our transition, we spun up 24 by 7 monitoring dedicated solely to our infrastructure and products. As an organization of our size, should always have this level of protection with someone watching for potential threats around the clock. We've also enhanced our vulnerability scanning to ensure that we've, we're detecting any and all vulnerabilities and configuration issues in our on-prem and cloud environments. Jim covered this on, his product, on the product end, but we're also running similar vulnerability scans on our internal systems. These scanning systems have an automated process that creates tickets right into our workflow which ensures that there's no lag between when the vulnerability is discovered and when that ticket is created. From there, our teams are able to assess the risk associated with those findings and prioritize updating or patching the appropriate resources. Additionally, we're currently in the process of rolling out web application firewalls to our critical applications and infrastructure. Most importantly though, we're continuing to train our teams on best practices and upgrade our systems to remain a security first organization. We don't want this to become a yearly check the box exercise. We're committed to fostering a culture of security across Enable. I want to reinstate the importance here of learning from every attack across the industry. After any security incident, including the unfortunate Kaseya attack, we learn more and can enhance our existing, as well as implement new safeguards and controls across our, our organization. We're all in this together, and we hope organizations continue sharing information so everyone reduces their risk.
Thanks, Dave, and thank you to each member of our panel. Others have said it, but as we know, these attacks can happen to anyone. To defeat these threats, we must all come together and share information to prevent bad actors from repeating these attacks. As a company, Enable fully commit to doing everything we can to help the MSP community stay safe from harm. Thank you again for watching.